Hi everyone. Tonight we're going to deal with a very difficult topic for the Christian. Uh, in past messages and videos, video messages, we've dealt with the child of God and the world, the child of God and the devil. But today we're going to take on the child of God and the two natures within. Now, when a sinner becomes a Christian, he receives a new nature from God. He or she is now a direct creation of God. He becomes a partaker of the divine nature. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John 1.12 Because the Christian does not lose his old sinful nature, he is soon very conscious of the warfare within. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that you may not do the things that you would. Galatians 5.17 Christians have tried all kinds of religious schemes and joined all kinds of fanatical movements to get rid of their sinful natures. Many of them have deceived themselves, but no one else, into believing that they have been successful. There are many who claim for themselves that they have reached through a second work of grace, the state of sinless perfection. Now, such a doctrine and position is not only contrary to Scripture, but contrary to the experience of any and every Christian. However, there is victory in Christ for every fully yielded believer. The Apostle Paul has well described the believer's experience in these words. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Romans 7, 22-23. Notwithstanding this warfare, he exhorts his fellow saints in these words. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Romans 6, 12. You see, it is one thing for sin to dwell in the believer. It is another thing for sin to reign in him. The believer is urged to be constantly on his guard, to be sober, vigilant, prayerful, yielding himself moment by moment to the Lord. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. And there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. 1 Corinthians 10, 12-13 Now this does not mean that the Christian will lose his salvation, so forget that notion. But he can fall into sin if he does not do that which he is commanded to do, which is, yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments unto righteousness. Romans 6, 13. He is likewise commanded, submit yourselves unto God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John 4, 4. It is because of this great fact that God instructs us, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord, Romans 6.11. And then Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me, Philippians 4.13. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, Galatians 5.16. There is victory for the Christian in the Lord, and this victory comes by walking in the Spirit. All who thus walk fulfill the righteousness of the law by manifesting the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Romans 8, 4 and Galatians 5, 22. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 1 John 2, 1. But if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 1 John 1, 8. Now, in previous messages, as I said before, we have dealt with the Christian's conflict with the world and with the devil, but we are here dealing with an enemy 
which in this life never leaves us nor forsakes us, but which will hinder, defeat, and disgrace us unless we are ever and always yielded to the Lord and can truly say, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 When we are born of parents, of our parents, we inherit a nature of sin which abides with us as long as we abide on this earth. When we are born of God, we receive a divine nature. We are born from above. With such divine power, we can put to death the deeds of the flesh. The old man came to an end at Calvary, as we see from Romans 6, 3 to 6. Believers died with him. This is a super important point. But the believer must constantly put off the old man and put on the new. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Ephesians 4.22 Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to, to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Romans 6, 11-14. So there you have it. Please spread this message to everyone you know far and wide, because the time really is short. Now, grace be to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Bye-bye for now.